What you doing other nerds, I'm the AC and it's time to talk about The 100 Season 7 Episode 7, The Queen's Gambit. And the name of the, this episode uh, comes from Murphy playing a chess move in a game against uh, Russell Shedheta, which I think is what I'm going to call him from now on. But before I get too spoiled with that, this episode has a lot of talking. There's some connections that uh, kind of finally get made that were missing out last time or like they finally reconcile with people that they sh kinda had beef with before but really there's still not too much that happens in this one there are of course big reveals but yeah a lot of talking a lot of kind of heartfelt stuff in this one yeah, I thought it was alright uh, like I, it should have been touchy but I think the way they paced it made it not as impactful. But let's actually go into what happens in the episode. First off, right at the beginning of the episode, they bring in Gabriel to show him and talk more about the anomaly and stuff and how it works and what they've been doing. Um, Gabriel agrees to help them as long as they don't hurt his friends. Okay, but one interesting thing they bring up is that Bardo has been studying the stone for a thousand years. So to try to use that in this already mess of a time that's going on to try to figure out what's going on with that. Then, not only that, we see that Octavia and Echo have a moment. Echo has this memory of her and Bellamy back on the arc. And then I guess Octavia finally accepts Echo and they kind of make up, whatever. Then Dioza and Hope finally have their heart to heart they didn't get to have last time. and. It reminds you that for Dioza, it's been, what, a few weeks. For Hope, it's been 15 years without her. And Dioza still sees her as a little girl, because last time she saw her, yeah, it was. And this was kind of touching. And yeah, it makes me really like Dioza more as a character. And I think the more I see of Dioza and the more human side of her, I really, I really like her character. And it's really growing on me. But yeah, it finally reveals like Dioza, uh, like we knew, didn't want Hope to be like her. But there's one thing she says, like everyone sees her as this like terrorist and like this killer. And she just wanted her own daughter to be the one person who doesn't see her like that. Just like when she was a kid and her baby. Okay. Then, um, Echo cuts up her face a little bit, makes scars because that's how they get ready for battle. Realizes the reason they're there is because they want them to fight for them. They go out, they are just easily walk out of the room. Dioza and Hope easily walk out of the room right after them. And they're like, okay, yeah, we'll fight for you, we'll do this war. Still don't know who this war is even against. There must be another group out there, another, I don't know, rival faction. I don't know what's going on. But when they finally get together again, Clark and the rest of the group show up to the anomaly. They finally made it to Bardo. I guess that last one they went to led in the right place this time. And then that's it. They're still obsessed with Clark. I don't know why. I don't know. Really, this whole thing that's going on with that is my least in the thing I'm least interested in. I don't know if it's Tom thing or whatever. Until they do the reveal. They finally show who the shepherd is. Anders goes to this, I don't know, sleeping chamber, opens it up, and there's the shepherd. And it turns out it is Bill Corrigan? Corrigan Run? Corrigan? I don't know. I suck at names. If you do not know who this is, he was like the leader of the Second Dawn. He was one of the people that was making the bunkers. Um, he should be dead, of course. And now he's not. Don't know how he got here. And uh, him being here both works with and against my theory that Bardo is Earth. One, they said they've been studying for a thousand years. I don't know. That's a long time. But no, they must have been act act actively researching the stone. I don't know. It's a whole lot of stuff I'm trying to piece together. It could still be Earth. They, like, Bill could have had other bunkers and stuff like that he could have survived in away from everything else that happened in the series so far he could have found the anomaly during that hundred years and used that but it took him a long time to even decipher the stone i feel like they're still on earth 
somewhere. I don't know where at. Probably far away. I don't, but he's also been asleep for a thousand years. I don't, or on and off. I don't know, but yeah, he's the shepherd. I guess it makes sense, but it's also just like, it keeps tying everything back to Earth. And I, I feel like the Earth still has to be around and like survivable. If it's been a thousand years, uh, it could easily be like survivable again. Uh, if you remember, Monty was saying he was the one keeping a lookout, seeing if the Earth was survivable again. Maybe it didn't clear up with him for that time, but a thousand years is a long time. It could clear up by then. And who knows what was going on during all this. I know, it's a lot of stuff for me to wrap my head around. But yeah, this is what I'm least interested in. What I'm more interested in, and also kind of more disappointed in, is what's going on at Sanctum. Inja left to go look for Clark and the rest of that group. But it seems like a bad time to do it. I get that she needs Murphy and Maury to stay behind because they're supposed to act like primes and be in charge. But Inja is also the one who just like took command back of one crew. And then she just leaves. Also, I didn't see too much of one crew this episode, so maybe she took them, a lot of them with her too. I don't know. Also, um, what did she call him? Knight in the last episode? Was supposed to get those guns back. Still haven't seen anything from that. But there was one other weird thing going on. <laughs> Not really weird. Jackson's been acting like a therapist for Maddie. There's only really one scene of this. But it's weird hearing Jackson talk a lot. I realize he's always been like the helper. Now he seems to be in charge of therapy, <laughs> a shrink. I don't know. He's probably definitely in charge of like the whole medical stuff going on. But it was weird hearing him talk a lot. It just, I don't know, it sounded kind of cheesy and soap opery, like that kind of speaking. I don't know, it was weird. I have nothing against it. It was just, it was weird. You realize he doesn't usually speak that much. Seeing him as this more like, I don't know, he seemed more enlightened. I don't know. So, something about what he did made me feel suspicious. So, I don't know. Something made me suspicious of Jackson. We'll see where that leads to. But there's more talking in this. Uh, Murphy goes to feed Russell Shedheader. And they end up talking. They play chess together. Of course, it's a trap. Uh, it was to keep him away from Memory because... Like the episode of the title says, it's Queen's Gambit. It's a move Murphy plays during the chess match, but it also is referring to Amori acting more like a queen and being, you know, Murphy is obviously, she's kind of acts like his queen anyways, but she's really taking charge and acting as a queen, trying to help things move along and stay in control, trying to keep peace, but uh, it's not really working. She, she uh, talks to Nelson, who Nelson is talking to everyone apparently, the prisoners, the Russell Shahada, and she pulls the like classic um, parent reunion with the child, and like of course you know it's going to go bad, and it does. She tries to bring his parents to him, you know, the ones that abandoned him. His mom seems all for it. His dad is eventually is like, we made the right choice, blah, blah, blah. He kills him, blah, blah, blah. Prisoners come in, guns ablaze and whatever. Not really guns ablaze. And they come in fully loaded with guns. Yeah, so Children of Gabriel are now teamed up with the prisoners. They probably are complete control. Nelson threatened to sh shoot Amori, but no, they got him, you know, make demands first before they start killing people. That's kind of where it's at. Uh, Murphy was distracted the whole time, couldn't help out. It obviously, I don't even know why people don't just kill him. <laughs> like, kill Russell Shedheader. It will, all this mess will be at least better. But now, what are they going to do? What are they going to have to team up? I don't know. It's yeah, Russell Shedheader is probably all in his plan to try to make even more sides instead of letting everyone unite so now it's one crew against the prom followers now against a teamed up children of gabriel and prisoners just splitting up even more and probably what's going to happen children of gabriel and prisoners are going to have something that gets in between them and it's just going to be a war again and i don't know maybe this is the war the people on bardo think is coming 
maybe there's a whole other faction that they're all going to have to team up against anyways. It gets weird, but I'm sure it's all going to get settled out. What do you think? Have you seen this episode? Go ahead and let me know what you think. If you agree with what I say, if anything I said even makes sense. But if you do like what I have to say, go ahead and like this video. If you want to see me talk more about the 100 and all kinds of other stuff, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can see why I do all that. But until next time, I'm the AC. Thank you for watching and bye.